So co-working is a relatively new concept that hit, that's hit the region, not only in the UAE, but in the general Middle Eastern region. Uh, the shift came from kind of looking at what's required in terms of staying agile and staying lean in terms of business sense. And uh, what we ended up seeing was the licensing change from just being a mainland kind of li uh, license where you can operate on the mainland to various free zone kind of licenses, which allowed you to, to be a bit more flexible in the, in the day to day work that you do and in terms of activities that you can kind of bring on board. So for example, uh, previously the kind of big players in the market were these uh, corporations who would be physically located in one space, run like a traditional office, and you know that was it, nine to five. Whereas nowadays we're seeing an increase in people who have uh, more expertise in different fields who wish to kind of take on maybe another job or see more benefit in more of a lifestyle slash work balance. And I think that's what kind of brought together this whole concept of co-working where I, as a business owner right now, my least, least of my worries should be, I need to find an office space, I need to fit it out, I need to spend, shell out that kind of money every month. So I believe the first type of workspaces only came up in, let's say, the last five, five years, seven to five years. Um, I was actually in university at that time, so I can't say hands-on what I saw. Um, but I think these were your traditional kind of co-working spaces where they'd offer either an option of an office or a flexible desk. And this was in relation with the licensing authorities that allowed people to say, hey, this is a desk, right? But it's my office at the same time. And that kind of sense of community in, in uh, a less kind of uh, corporate networking uh, style of workplace where I'm alone in this journey and in, in doing my own business. So I'd like to see people in the same kind of uh, field as me. So that was kind of the beginning of co-working, I'd like to say, in the UAE. There's, there's a good mix. I mean, it goes all the way from your typical business centers who have launched and then now we're kind of thinking, oh, we need to be a bit more trendy. We need to be a bit more we work and follow those kind of buzz, quirky uh, fit outs to attract the right kind of people. And then on top of that, there's, there's a few players in the market. I think in Dubai, there's, there's quite a few. There's a, between 15 to about 30 one-off co-working spaces who follow that kind of either I'm a provider for everyone in, in, in whatever business they want to do, or you have a few players who are in the niche market. So a few names like Nook Co-working Space, where they focus mainly on wellness and health and fitness kind of uh, work, where they've partnered with an entity called uh, DMCC, which offers licensing for those specific activities. And then you have other newer players uh, like Nesseb, which are focused mainly on uh, the creative kind of people. So your photographers, your designers, your online retail brands. Um, so they're cultivating their own kind of, uh, I'd like to say the beginning of zones in the UAE in terms of creative and wellness and stuff. Uh, and then I think I'd like to, I'm proud to say there's us, we're a bit more ahead of the game where we, just we partner with locations and we we offer a kind of one-stop solution for people to work in a space but not be confined to that one space uh, whether you like a kind of quirky environment or something a bit more calm and um, more uh, more light in a, in a space we offer a broad range of locations for anyone to come in and just kind of plug and play into our place Yeah, I think I can start with how we actually began Let's Work. We first of all partnered with one of the Rove brands, which is the hotel we're in right now. We saw that after 10.30, their food and beverage area is not as full as they'd like it to be. Just because of the fact that it's a hotel and people come in here for breakfast, the tourists would be here and they would leave and go explore Dubai instead of staying in the hotel. Um, so we came in and we said, hey, this place is actually great. They have great Wi-Fi, the coffee is good. There's plugs everywhere, the seating's, and it's, uh, the seating's perfect, and it's actually a cool space to work out of. So we started working there, and we gathered a few people, and we said, hey, would you pay a monthly membership to get free tea, coffee, uh, unlimited, uh, unlimited throughout the month, 
Uh, we'll set up our own Wi-Fi network. You guys can plug in wherever you want. We'll call this the Let's Work table for our members only. And just feel like it's a part of a thing instead of the waiters feeling like you're just wasting a seat in the restaurant. We're actually an added benefit in, in kind of activating the space. Um, so that began with five locations and about 30 to 60 members. Where we are today is 40 locations across not only Dubai, but uh, the other Emirates. So Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Ras al and Ajman. And we're about uh, 8,000 registered users. And that was all thanks to the app that we launched, which uh, kind of brought in that critical mass and we're still growing every day. Um, a few things. The first one would be a pretty simple uh, no-brainer, which would be a, a meeting room platform. There's, there's no uh, real kind of uh, easy way to book meeting rooms in the city. Um, and that's one of the biggest kind of requests that we get as a, as a co-working player. We obviously work with restaurants and hotels and within the hotels and the restaurants too, you'd be surprised they have either a private dining room or meeting rooms like the one we had, uh, we're in right now. Um, there's no easy way to book this. It's a, it's a back and forth process. So what my team and myself, we ended up doing was just creating a simple form that gets forwarded out to the events manager of the, the hotel. Um, and then because of that, we managed to keep track of how many requests are actually coming in. And we know what times, uh, instead of booking for a full day, people want a few hours or to even 30 minutes that the hotels aren't actually capturing. So can we develop a platform that benefits our community and the hotels to list their spaces and just, again, offer that flexibility to book a space as, as uh, whenever and wherever you want. Um, so that's one angle of it. And just kind of developing new features on the app is another section. Um, one thing I think we're going to do really well is the fact that we aren't confined by space because we just add on extra locations. So with saying that, we actually kind of become this lobbying party of, of 8,000 members, hopefully up to 50,000 members who are all in the same space where, look, I don't need to get an office to prove to you that I'm actually running a business. Uh, allow me to be free and just kind of do what I need. And then a step further where we can actually go up to these licensing authorities and say, look, we have 50,000 people. This is their wants and needs. Why are you going out and developing different uh, products that you're launching out without actually listening to what people want? We are kind of that feedback mechanism and a, and a nice lobbying party to kind of understand where we need to go to next to ensure the success of the SMEs and the freelancers in the country, because obviously I think it's moving towards that zone. You see corporations, instead of hiring in-house marketing people, they're freelancers. It's easier for them. It's easier for, it's better for the freelancers. And everyone kind of has that uh, flexibility to move around and, and choose, choose who they want to work with. Yeah, so it's happening actually here in the, in, in the UAE. We've partnered with uh, One Space as of now. And uh, basically, they, as a co-working space, you have to see it as they do have a rent uh, they have to cover and they do have a beautiful fit out that they've, they've, they've used. Um, we're lucky in the fact that we're completely asset light, so we didn't actually invest much money in the space itself. Um, we asked the restaurants and hotels if, for example, extra plugs need to be put in, if a table needs to be arranged in a certain way. That's up to them to provide to our members. Um, so given that, their kind of bread and butter is selling the offices. So as you mentioned, the big names like WeWork and, and, uh, and others that are playing around the market, the co-working space, they, um, their focus is mainly, you know, get occupancy, get the numbers in on those office spaces to allow us to operate. Where they kind of maybe lack, and especially the, the, the local competitors here, they, um, they don't really have that footfall that comes in. So where we come in and say, okay, your bread and butter is the office space. We have the kind of uh, the majority that we can bring into to the co-working space who then can potentially graduate and grow their team and then require an office space with you. So allow us to come in and kind of provide that, uh, that, that footfall and from your end is provide that service where it's, it's not uh, maybe once, once a week I'd like to work out of a proper co-working space, uh, a physical office, a physical desk. You know, people miss that kind of that switch and I think it's it's always important to keep that flexibility so definitely partnering with more co-working spaces is on our scope and we're, we're actively looking for spaces to partner with
It was great. I mean, uh, uh, I, I, was, I spoke to Piers uh, a couple of days ago and I mentioned to him that we've done a lot of different conferences and a lot of different events for, for our community personally. But I've never seen such a, a dynamic kind of event and everyone's, very, everyone's coming ready with ideas, ready with uh, discussion points. Um, personally, I think the, the, it's, it's a discussion that needs to be had here since if you um, if you understand the history of how Airbnb actually came into the market where it shook the government and and, and, and and kind of said okay wait we don't have control over this but it's definitely a need for the people so I think um, they did kind of like a, a reactive reactive kind of uh, thing and saying okay we'll release a new license thousand dirham for everyone who wants to own an Airbnb and that's the way we're going to do it where I think stuff like this is very memorable going forward and saying let's not wait for the people to come in and 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 then kind of shake the industry is is this is happening we embrace it and it's really important to develop on it uh given the kind of power that uh, that uh, these authorities have i think i think it's 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 a benefit for both for businesses and for the government to kind of think one step ahead as well you know don't try to control everything um and yeah, honestly, just kind of uh, hearing about it and meeting the the, Air, the guys from Airbnb and uh, and all these different companies that I, I didn't know existed in the region was was really beneficial to me, just based on the fact that I can add my services to the people coming to stay in their apartments too. And that was most of the requests I got today, which is perfect for me. It's uh, we're trying to grow our community as much as we can, and if these business travelers or tourists are coming in here and they don't really know where to kind of go and maybe they need to get some work done then perfect, it would be a great kind of opportunity for us to come in.